So now we have the next speaker, um, uh, Vani Kanta Sharma, from uh, what, what do I say? From the uh, Shivanathar or the uh, New Institute? Uh, Bani was with Shivanathar, but now he is uh, with JNC. JNC is our uh, Bangalore, and uh, he is going to talk to us about carbonyl, carbonyl, uh, carbonyl n pi star and n pi star sigma star interactions in small molecules. So, Bunny. So, you yeah. have 25 minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me first uh, thank Professor Arunan for uh, inviting me to this workshop. And I also should start by thanking you all this weak interaction community here because it is you guys to whom I listened to in the hydrogen bonding definition conference and got inspired to work in this area of weak interactions. So, sorry for breaking this trend, I am not going to talk about hydrogen bonding here. So, what I am going to talk about is how two carbonyl groups in close proximity can involve in attractive interaction and in the later half of the talk, I will go ahead and show, to, show you something about amide nitrogen who, uh, that can involve in weak and to pi star as well as and to sigma star interaction. Professor Chakravarti has shown you hydrogen bonding involving amide nitrogens. I will show you weak interactions that are not hydrogen bonding, but amide nitrogens can participate in. So let me start by giving a brief overview of the carbonyl group. This audience does not need an introduction of the carbonyl group, but for a long time I have been underestimating the importance of carbonyl group. It is while I started teaching organic chemistry reaction mechanism, I realized that most of the named reaction that we teach at undergrad and MSc level involves the transformation of a carbonyl group. And in peptide chemistry, it is so important because every peptide residue has one carbonyl group. So any weak interaction that involves a carbonyl group can pass throughout the whole peptide chain. So when you look into the weak interaction involving a carbonyl group, there are several of them that are very distinct. For example, we all know that hydrogen bonding can uh, like describe the solubility of small aldehydes and ketones in water. And we also know the stabilization of alpha helices and beta sheets based on linear long range hydrogen bonding. And if you look at calcogen calcogen interaction, you can also have a subtype where carbonyl groups can involve in weak interactions with divalent sulfur, selenium, and tellurium groups. So these are basically N2 sigma star interaction. So, the topic of my today's discussion is actually a subtype of nucleophile carbonyl interaction. In the early 70s, Professor Daniels and his student Birgi had shown by crystallographic analysis that anionic groups and nucleophilic groups can approach carbonyl groups from a very particular orientation, which they defined as Birgi's ionic trajectory. So, in the, the approach is such that the nucleophile approaches this carbonyl group at a particular angle theta which is close to 110 degree, which they defined as like Burgitonic trajectory. And today, whatever we know about nucleophilic addition and substitution reaction at a carbonyl center has originated from this particular works. So now if the nucleophilic group is another carbonyl group, we define this interaction as carbonyl-carbonyl interaction. Now this interaction, if you look at into the structural parameters are defined by three different parameters. If the distance, which is the oxygen carbon distance, which is less than 3.22, the sum of van der Waals radii between carbon and oxygen atom. And the angular approach, the burgi dunning trajectory, which is 109 plus minus 10, and a small pyramidality of the sp2 carbon towards the donor center. So these three parameters basically defines a carbonyl carbonyl interaction. So now, going back uh, into the literature, probably this is the first example where carbonyl carbonyl interactions were observed by Bolton in almost 10 years before Burgi's paper. So what they showed here is that a glucose analog, alloxane, can involve in very strong carbonyl carbonyl interaction. As you can see, the distance is 2.79, much lower than 3.22 angstrom. So the conclusion of this paper says that what is surprising is that in presence of strong hydrogen bond donor atoms like amides, this packing, crystal packing of this molecule is totally defined by carbonyl carbonyl interaction. Another defining work in this area is by Professor Frank Allen from Cambridge, who has shown that from the crystallographic analysis of 
uh, ketonic group, the, there are three pos different possible orientations in which two carbonyl groups can participate in non-covalent interaction. So, now Professor Ronald Range has actually popularized this area in the last decade or so, where he has shown that this carbonyl carbonyl interaction, although it was previously defined as dipolar interaction, he has shown that there is a substantial orbital contribution from the lone pair of oxygen of one carbonyl group and the pi star orbital of the other carbonyl group. And he has experimentally actually shown that from taking an example of the proline derivative that the cis trans isomers, where the trans isomer has this particular interaction and cis isomer doesn't have this interaction, the population of the trans isomer can be modulated by N2 pi star interaction, but not by dipolar contribution. So, Increase in dipolar contribution doesn't increase the population of the transform, but increase in n 2 pi star interaction increases the population of the transform in the solution. So he concluded that the dominant mechanism in this interaction is the orbital delocalization. So now actually we have several different kinds of systems where n 2 pi star interactions were observed and thanks to Professor Alok Das who is sitting in the audience, this is actually the first review article of any type that has been published in this particular area, which has actually made our life much easier in literature survey. So later on, Professor Rain's group has actually summarized their work very recently. So when we looked into this particular interaction, you will see that there is a carbonyl group that acts as a donor, there is a carbonyl group that acts as an acceptor. So then, in a very extreme scenario, when the, both the carbonyl groups are polarized, you can have a scenario where this carbon will carry a positive charge and this acceptor oxygen, carbonyl oxygen will carry a negative charge. And this is ready for another interaction and this is ready for another donation. So you can have a sequential carbonyl carbonyl interaction. And this is actually known in the literature. What is not known is, what if the original acceptor donates back to the original donor and this has not been investigated. So we thought that we should investigate whether this kind of an interaction is possible, which we call reciprocal n 2 pi star interaction. So as you can imagine, for this kind of interactions to exist, these two carbonyl groups must be non-coplanar. So we need a system, the circle as I have shown here, which makes this molecule, the two carbonyl groups orient in such a way that there is a possibility of this kind of interaction. So naturally we actually chose this particular system because the two lone pairs of nitrogens in this particular case, although they are amide, the lone pairs are not non-existent, they are there and there will be repulsion between these two nitrogen lone pairs and it will make the two nitrogen lone pairs orthogonal to each other and orient the molecule in such a way that there is a possibility of reciprocal interaction as you can see here. And what is interesting is that by putting X and Y, X and Y and electronically tuning this interaction we can have like both the interaction like D1 and D2 we can tune as you can see the correlation here between D1 and D2 we can choose Y and X in such a way that there can be stronger interaction or there can be weaker interaction. And another interesting aspect here is the Burgi dunning trajectory is no longer 109 because there will be a constraint in the molecule and we have now the theta angle of approach of the nucleophiles are 85 plus minus 10. So when we saw that the hydrazide motifs can have this kind of interaction, we went ahead and checked whether in the literature there are molecules that can have this kind of interaction. And we went ahead and did a CSD search and we observed that there are almost 1500 molecules that satisfy the criteria of D1 and D2 less than 3.22 angstrom. And in most of the cases, as you can see, the interactions, the molecules involved in interaction where the two carbonyl groups are separated by three covalent bonds. And then we went ahead and did an analysis of what X and Y are required for this kind of interaction to hold. And as you can see, in almost 50% of the cases, one of the atoms X is a heteroatom, the other one is a chiral center. And if you look at the structure, which is nothing but a peptide. So this actually inspired us to look into the crystal geometries of proteins and what we observe is that in proteins these interactions are present almost 7% in overall residues. So out of the 7% total the most dominant structures where these interactions are present are the P2 helices where you have a lot of prolines and proline structure is particularly suited for this kind of interaction. 
So almost 18% of the proliferin to helices had this interaction, as you can see here. And here we have plotted the orbital contribution on this interaction in the, uh, molecule, uh, the dimer fragments that we have uh, extracted from the protein database. So this identification of reciprocal interaction actually tells us that we do not understand completely the carbonyl carbonyl interaction and what are the different orientations possible for two carbonyl groups to involve in weak interactions. So to identify what are the different motives possible, what we did is we did a comprehensive like CSD analysis of both intermolecular and intramolecular COCO interactions. And what we have observed is that there are at least six different possibilities where two carbonyl groups can orient itself based on these four angles theta, theta 1 to theta 4. So in all these cases, actually, the, not in all cases you have a positive pyramidality in the acceptor carbon atom, which says that these interactions are not dominantly antipositor in nature. So here I have actually showed you uh, from 50 molecules of each category that in the first category of interaction where one carbonyl group is almost orthogonal to the other, the interaction is predominantly covalent, uh, predominantly antipositor. But in a motif like two, where the two carbonyl groups are anti-parallel, it is the pi 2 pi star interaction between the two carbonyl groups that dominates and n 2 pi star has only minor contribution. So what I conclude from this study is that all carbonyl carbonyl interactions are not n 2 pi star in nature. So as you can see, out of these six different motifs, it is not possible for small organic molecules to have all this type of interaction because of steric reasons. But in proteins, all these six motifs are possible. And so far, in the literature, we have only identified motif 3 and recently we have identified motif 4. So, and this is an example, very recent example, maybe two weeks back this paper has come where they have discovered long range COCO interaction. So, so far what I have discussed about COCO interactions are all local interaction, but this is the first example where they have shown that carbonyl carbonyl long range interaction can stabilize alpha helices. So now, when I started working on reciprocal carbonyl carbonyl interaction, I got introduced into this kind of molecules having nitrogen nitrogen covalent bonds. But these molecules are very important in the sense that there are many commercially available drugs that are used as pesticides having the hydrazide motif. And this hydrazide motif are also embedded in all different types of NN oligomers. So if we understand the nature of the or the conformational properties of hydrazides, we can actually predict secondary structures of oligomer possibly. So what we have tried here is that to understand what happens if I replace one of these hydrazines with, for example, a metal group. So whether this reciprocal interaction will still be intact. So as you can see, the hydrazides can have four different types of amide rotamers that are trans-trans, trans-cis, cis-trans, and cis-cis. And on top of that, if you look at, there is a nitrogen-nitrogen bond. Because of nitrogen-nitrogen bond restricted rotation, you can have another four rotamers. So total eight rotamers are possible in a very small molecule, okay? So it is not very easy to understand the conformational properties of these very small molecules. So what I'm going to discuss here is what happens when I substitute one of these hydrogens with a methyl group what is the rotamer that are going to be dominating in these cases. So what I have observed in this case is that when the two nitrogens are substituted with hydrogens, only one rotamer we observe that is the trans-trans rotamer because of the steric regions, the hydrogens are always trans with respect to the CO. The NaCO is always trans. But the moment you make one of the hydrogens methyl, the rotamer percentage completely reverses. It is the trans-cis rotamer that becomes dominant. You may ask what is so important about that because if you make a secondary amide, as tertiary, there is always going to be a cis rotamer. But how much? As you know, in protein data bank, we have only less than 7% of cis isomers of proline. So although we think that proline can isomerize in cis and trans, it is predominantly the trans that exists. Only 7% is cis. But in this case, as you can see, in some cases, Almost nearly 100% rotamer is the cis form. So what we have observed here is that 
the nitrogen has a predominant role here. If you substitute this nitrogen with carbon, again the rotamer ratio reverses, meaning the transform again becomes the most dominant one. Okay. So basically what we have discovered in this particular case is that the nitrogen here can interact with the acyl substituent that is in the other CO group either in a N2 sigma star fashion or in a N2 pi star fashion and stabilize this cis amide conformation. So as you can see here in this particular case you have both CO CO as well as N uh, sigma star interaction but it is the N interaction that dominates all the time. In most of the cases even you do not have the CO CO interaction but the sigma star or pi star interaction involving the amide nitrogen is always present. And crystallographic evidence also suggests that this interaction is there because you have for example for this ethyl compound you have nitrogen, carbon, carbon almost exist in the linear conformation. So now the question is whether we can control the isomer ratios by tuning this particular interaction in solution. So in this particular case what we have done is we have changed a substituent in a remote position to tune this lone pair availability on the nitrogen atom and to see whether we can control this stereochemistry of this amide bond here. So as you can see when we put a electron donating group here, so the lone pair conjugation with this CO decreases. So then the lone pair becomes more available for this particular interaction and you have higher percentage of the cis isomer. And when you put an electron withdrawing group there for example a nitro the conjugation from nitrogen to CO increases and the lone pair becomes unavailable for this interaction and the percentage of the cis rotamer decreases. And we can have a very nice Hamet correlation of this particular substituent with this nitrogen sigma star or pi star interaction. In this case I have shown sigma star interaction. So the other thing is that in crystal structure this molecules are always packed by NaCO hydrogen bonding. So it is possible that if you increase the concentration of the molecule in solution this interaction will be dominant. So if this interaction is dominant for example the intermolecular, intermolecular hydrogen bonding between this molecule. So for example if this hydrogen is strongly hydrogen bonded with something else that increases the population or the probability of this nitrogen lone pair to involve in interaction. So which should actually increase the percentage of the cis isomer again. So we did a concentration dependent NMR study and have shown that the, with the increase in concentration of the molecules the percentage of the cis isomer keeps on increasing which is not the case when you replace this hydrogen with a CH3 or you do not have a NH hydrogen as you can see in 15 and 19 the curves are flat but in all other cases there is consistent increase. We have actually done this experiment from 1 millimolar to 100 millimolar concentration and have seen some 10 percent increase in the cis isomer population with the concentration. So now we have actually switched uh, on to look into whether we can use this kind of interaction to stabilize molecules of biological significance. So in this particular case what we have shown is that this particular fragment that has carbonyl carbonyl reciprocal interaction we can actually incorporate this in a drug like scaffold and can design new chemical entities where because of this particular interaction this molecules will be residified and as you all know more rigid is the molecule better the binder to biological targets. So in this particular case we have asked couple of important questions whether what are the conditions that needs to be satisfied for a small fragment to be incorporated in a large molecule and retain the interactions and if this interaction is being retained whether this interaction will be able to determine or dictate conformational properties of bigger molecules. So with this I will uh, summarize we have identified at least three new structural motifs for carbonyl carbon interaction and the reciprocal variant of CO CO interaction was observed in protein as well especially in the proliproline 2 helices region and the incorporation of CO CO interaction can be a novel way of introducing conformational rigidity to small molecule and peptidomimetic drug scaffold. And we believe that the discovery of this amide to N2 pi star or N2 sigma star interaction could be a major step forward in understanding the structural property of a wide variety of NN bond containing molecule that has the NN diacyl hydrazide motif embedded in their structure. So with this I would like to thank my students 
uh, Abdul Rahim, he was my first student who was involved in majority of this work. Now he has graduated and joined University of Minnesota as a postdoc. Uh, Bistajit, who has done most of the studies related to CSD structural database analysis, and Jugal, who has done most of the studies with the NN diacyl hydrazides. And then Sibnadar University for funding. Most of the work that I have presented here were carried out at Sibnadar University, my former institution, and then DST SCRB for our career research grant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bani. So, uh, we could have many questions because uh, Bani has given us ample time. Two questions. So, yeah. Uh, so, first thing is if you put any, uh, first thing would, why do you still call it n to pi star interactions? If you remove the electron, uh, the proton from the nit nitrogen, you increase the charge density on the nitrogen, it improves the interaction. Why do you still call it the n to pi star? Because I had made this comment to Ronald Reigns quite some time ago when he published that Nature Chemical Biology paper. And we had established that these are not n to pi star. It still goes on in the literature everywhere. Uh, we, we strongly have shown that it is charged to pi star. Even your results are showing that. Charge transfer means what kind of charge transfer? Charge transfer? No transfer. It is just a charge to pi, pi star. Uh, uh, the, the n itself is not sufficient to close in distances of, of beyond 2.7 to angstroms. Many of these come as close as 2.3 angstroms actually. And that's not possible and you, you clearly your own experiments show that you invoke these uh, uh, charge to pi star interactions. So you are talking about the carbonyl case or in the… In any case, case, that's my second point actually. You are saying this N, uh, so the 1, 4 interaction between a lone pair and an acceptor. Uh, we have shown recently and I bet you, you put anything there, anything with a lone pair or with, uh, with a um, uh, atom that can carry a charge, you can find a 1, 4 neat interaction. It will planarize the whole thing. So… You are showing that nitrogen, right? Towards the end you are showing this nitrogen interaction. Yes. You this can show one. that you put a oxygen there, you put anything over no, there. No, no. I have several crystal structure where I will show that the moment you put anything other than carbon, it will reverse the geometry. No, 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 I am not talking about that. Uh, so, of course, you need to have a good acceptor there. Yes. You need to have a sigma star or a good acceptor there. That's that's why it's the point. Well, once sigma star is there means automatically you are telling now that it's a charge transfer. It's not charge Oxy transfer. So basically, what no, my it's point not is about the acceptor. No, no. It's not about the acceptor. It's about the donor. The donor. It's a charge donation from there. It's not a charge transfer. Charge transfer is very different from charge donor. Yeah, that I understood. So but the interaction is not from a lone pair. If you had a, uh, uh, for example, if you go to the previous one that you were talking about, the, uh, the uh, reverse interaction, if you had any pi acceptor there, it need no, uh, or a pi donor there, it would still do the same thing. You don't need a carbonyl. And some of these uh, uh, interactions that you show, or sterically pushed towards that. You take the, the aza dicarbonyl, if you take that, it, even if you model it, it does not have too many confirmations for it to actually flip into. It has to go into that kind of isostructural thing where this carbonyl meets the uh, other one, the other carbonyl meets this one. So that's, they are logged into that. So why I am telling this is N2 pi star is because as you can see, with the substitute and I can easily see that there is a… So there is an interaction. There is no question no about question there is an interaction. See, the thing is, is any interaction you take, it will have multiple components. It will, it will have dispersion, it will have electrostatic, lot of components will be there. What I am talking about here is that which is the most dominating contribution coming from. And justified… And and justifying by best, see, if it is a Coulombic, you cannot just electronically tune this interaction. If it is a Coulombic interaction, you do not it get is not this Coulombic. kind of nice hematocorrelation. It is not Coulombic. There is a pi acceptor. Your donor is the, uh, the, in the, the question. Anyway, we can… Yeah. Uh, this I is, think there is this a interesting something. debate going on here. Yeah. Maybe we should do it at the… Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think there is… Alok has some comment to make to uh, this… Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So, so I think it maybe is, Alok can Yeah, it is it is called n to pi star because because it is the interaction between the orbitals. That's why. It is when because in case of hydrogen bond also, you will you'll be seeing there is interaction between n orbital and sigma star orbital. And we have seen also in for n to pi star, what happens when these two moiety they come close closer, this n orbital energetically I mean stabilized and pi star is destabilized. And that is purely quantum mechanical. So this, this because this is orbital, because if two orbital is interacting, you have to tell it is n pi star. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe just a short comment about the yeah, This slide, my uh, query is instead of the nitrogen interacting the orbital, what about the carbonyl oxygen? That can also what's the distance between the oxygen and the acceptor? Yeah, actually I have shown in this slide, as you can see, orbital carbonyl also actually interacts. But the carbonyl interaction is not consistent in, and in some cases it is not entirely there, it is almost absent. So that is why we are telling that it is not the carbonyl carbon interaction, it is the interaction coming from the nitrogen. Yeah. Actually I also have several questions but we can discuss this <laughs> later. Uh, so Arudan, uh, you are the boss, so uh, let us so just ask if there is any other question. Okay. So let us thank Bani thank for the very uh, stimulating talk I should say. And then uh, thank you.